I have my cup of coffee. I have my Bible. Let's spend some time with God. What do you say? I was reading through the Bible. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating even the dividing of soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You see, the truth is when a lot of times when we read the Bible, we uh, just skim over it. We read it as if though it was a book, but it's more than just that. It is a living organism. God will speak to us through the Bible if we'll allow it. This morning, I want to read to you from the book of Genesis chapter 2. And in Genesis chapter 2, uh, we're going to read some good stuff. Uh, I'm going to start reading verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, I'm going to start reading verse 7. I'll read through verse 17. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four riverheads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedalium and the onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hedekel. It is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. And then the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, um, there are a couple of things that I want you to see in this, uh, this scripture. Um, that, that God formed man. He made man from the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into man, into his nostrils, uh, the breath of life. And, and man became a living being. And so the real question is, what makes man special? What makes us special? Uh, is it that God created us, that God formed us? Um, if, if we look at Psalm 139, it says that he knit us together while we were in our mother's womb. Uh, is that what makes us special? And the answer to that question is no. If I were to have kept reading, and we get to verse 19, it says, Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. In other words, God formed, he shaped, he's the master potter. Uh, he, he formed and he shaped even all the, the birds of the air and all the beasts of the field. He, he formed and he shaped all of them. And so we're not any different than, than all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the air, except for one thing. There's, there's one thing that makes us special, is that God breathed into man. He breathed into him, into his nostrils, the gift of life. In other words, God took some of himself and he put it into man. He took some of himself and he put it into man. Now, there's something else that we need to see. The second thing we need to see is that God planted a garden. He planted a, a, a garden in the east side, and he called that garden Eden. Uh, God made a very special place. God made a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, 
the place of the, had all the rivers and the and the special stones and 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 it, it, most importantly it had the tree it had the tree of life that was in the middle of this garden it was a most magnificent beautiful amazing place and that god had had planted this garden he made this garden uh, and it was awesome now here's the part that most of us don't pick up on and i believe that that this is probably the uh the very first image in the whole bible that this could possibly be the very first image of the rapture it's Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Now, what do I mean when I say rapture? What do I mean when I say, well, this is the first image of rapture that we, we see throughout the whole Bible? Uh, let's take a look at what it means to what rapture itself means. Uh, so if you have your Bible, and I hope you have your Bible, I hope um, when, when, I, when I come on and, and do this type of thing, that you, you, you bring your Bible, you read along with me, and drink a cup of coffee, and spend some time with God. But, but John chapter 14, <clears throat> Jesus is talking to his disciples. And that's good coffee. Jesus is talking to his disciples. In chapter 14 of John, verses 1 through 3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Another uh, scripture for rapture that I want to share with you is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And this is probably the scripture that most uh, pastors will talk about when they speak about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if we were to begin reading at um, verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So in those two scriptures that I showed you, uh, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3, Jesus is saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare a place. And it's going to be an amazing place. It's going to be a beautiful place. And, uh, and when I'm done, when I've finished preparing that place, I'm going to come back and I'm going to take you there to be with me in that amazing place. And then in 1 Thessalonians, we, we see this idea that, you know, some people are dying and, and we're becoming sad and, and Paul wants to encourage us. And so he says, guys, listen, the Lord is coming. And he's going to come on the clouds, and there's going to be this loud shout and this trumpet sound, and, and uh, the dead in Christ are going to rise. And those of us who are still alive, you know, this was written almost 2,000 years ago. And so everybody that this was written to are, have already died. But you and I, were alive. So as long as you and I are alive, then this applies to us. This applies to us. Then we who are alive, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. See, so the, the idea of the rapture is that, that God prepares a place, a beautiful place, and then 
and then he takes us out of this place to be in that place with him. You see, that's the idea of the rapture. God has or is or has already prepared or preparing a place. It's a glorious place, a place where there is no death, a place where there is no night, a place where there, there is no sun. I mean, the, 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 the glory of God is the light that shines there. There is no darkness there. It's a place where there is no sin. And God is coming. Jesus Christ is coming to take us out of this place that is full of death, this place that is full of darkness, this place that is full of sin. And he's going to take us out of this place and he's going to take us and put us in this glorious place that he's preparing for you and for me. Now, let's go back to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. See, in Genesis chapter 2, God formed man out of the dust of the ground. And he made man something very special. It wasn't that he, he formed us that made us special. What made us special is he breathed into us the gift of life. He breathed into our nostrils the gift of life. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22 says he put his seal on us. And he put his Holy Spirit in our heart, guaranteeing us what is to come. In other words, God, if you, are, if you are a Christian and you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior, he's put a seal on you and he's put his Holy Spirit in your heart and he has made you special. He's made you special. And, and what's really interesting is he's, in, in Genesis, he not only made man in, in, by the ground, then he goes and he plants this garden. And he didn't plant the garden first. He, he made man in the earth, made man out of the ground. Then he goes and he plants this garden in the east. But verse 15 is very amazing. He takes man out from where he was created and he was formed, and he put him in that special place, that glorious place, that beautiful place, the Garden of Eden. So here's the truth. You see, the truth is you were created in this world, but you were not created for this world. You were created for eternity. You were created for heaven. You were made in this world, but you were not made for this world. You were made for a special place, a glorious place, and you were made special. If you believe in Jesus Christ, he has put his seal on you, and he has laid his Holy Spirit in your heart, guaranteeing what is to come. And at some point in time, Jesus, who has gone away to prepare a place for us, will return, and he will take us to be with him, and we shall be with the Lord forevermore. Well, that's spending a little bit of time in God's Word today. Uh, I hope that, that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed uh, listening to this truth out of, out of God's Word, uh, push the like button. And if you really liked it and you really want to see what, what possibly could come next, then push the subscribe button so that uh, uh, you'll be up to date on all the new videos that I post. Tomorrow I'm going to look a little bit more at the rest of Genesis chapter 2 because, oh, it gets controversial. So you'll want to tune in tomorrow uh, for the rest of Genesis chapter 2. I pray you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for, for joining me on YouTube. Thank you for following me, liking the videos, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Have our cup of coffee. We have our Bible. And we're going to spend some time with God. I pray you have a 